Welcome to GetAPolaroid.com. Now you've come to this site because you probably want to get a Polaroid. That's good, because just like the website name promises, that's exactly what you're going to learn. Now, the first thing you need to know is when you're looking for a Polaroid camera, there are three criteria to look for. The first is that the camera is working. Here's an example of a working camera. Now I got this camera on eBay uh, two or three months ago. It is a working camera and it was advertised exactly as such. The thing you want to look for is the words tested, working, if you see something that says like four parts or something else like that, then you don't want it. And um, you're going to find lots of eBay auctions, plenty of choices, don't worry we'll go into models next time. Um, the things you also want to look for are that it has a working battery compartment. That's right here. This particular camera has actually been retrofitted with a current and temporary battery compartment so I can use regular double and triple A batteries. Older Polaroid cameras use the battery that is no longer in production. So it's important that when you find your camera, it takes either contemporary batteries or the easier, the, the kind of small CR 123s. You'll find that in the listing by where it says modified to accept double A's, modified to accept current batteries, and if you don't know, just ask the seller. Usually they'll tell you if they're in the business of retrofitting Polaroids, they'll let you know right away that it takes current batteries. The third thing you want to look for is a strap. Now this seems, I don't know, maybe it doesn't seem obvious, but it's, it's really important if you're going to be walking around all day that you have a strap, and I'll show you why, and you have to look kind of weird, but basically, if you're going to be like this, you want to make sure that you can let your camera go and just be free and not have to deal with anything. So that's a really nice feature. Um, we've kind of taken for granted that cameras can just go into our pockets because they're on our cell phone or in our purse. But when you're carrying around this big honking thing, you kind of want to be free to, well, not have to deal with that. So a strap is very important. Most of them have straps. Typically they're the original leather strap. So don't worry. shouldn't be too hard to find. The next step is to figure out what camera you should get. Now this is a pretty easy step because there's only a few truly worthwhile Polaroid cameras. This is one of them. This is the Polaroid Model 100 Automatic. It's got a glass lens. It has a rangefinder up top so you can get really good focusing. It can be modified very easily to accept those triple A's and Typically, it's available for 60 or so dollars, sometimes a lot less. There are other plenty of other models to consider. There's, you know, the, the automatic 250, the automatic 350, 450. There's a lot of different models, and you can check out the actual page here to find out more. I've got a whole breakdown about which ones are good, which ones are bad, which ones you should avoid, which ones are worth extra money, etc. But just know that this Polaroid Automatic 100 is a perfect starter camera. Very ergonomic, it's got a metal body, it's got a tripod hole at the bottom which means you can take long exposures or group shots, group shots. All in all, truly a wonderful camera and it folds up, well they almost all fold up, it folds up really compactly so if you want to travel light it's relatively easy to do. Okay, so that's your Polaroid Model 100 and for most of these videos this is the camera we're going to use as the example camera. It's just that good. Put that down. So the next step is to get your instant film. Now this is actually a pretty easy step. You would think, oh no, Polaroid doesn't exist anymore. How am I going to get film? Well, lucky for us, Fuji went ahead and picked up the slack on that. They make instant film for Polaroid cameras, which is pretty terrific because the film itself is fantastic. And amazingly, it's not overpriced. You get around... If you get it online, you can get a 10-pack of color or black and white for anywhere between $8 and $12. I like to get it from Amazon. It's also available from B&H. You can get it from eBay. Um, these are the models to get. They're, there's only a couple different kinds you can find, so it's not too hard. But let's go into the merits of each. Um, the first option you have is color film. And color film is great because, well, it's color. You've got a lot of, you know, interesting things you can do with it, and overall, it's Polaroids look a lot like the Polaroids of, of old. You know, the, the 1970s pictures your parents took, that's what these are going to look like. They're, they're not going to fade, they're going to be more saturated, so that's actually kind of cool. You'll get to see what they originally looked like before they faded.
The thing to know about the Polaroid color stock made by Fuji is that it's kind of a high contrast film. It's you basically you're either going to expose your subject normally and the background's going to be out of you know a little bit exposed or a little bit unexposed. It's just it doesn't do well with contrast. So if there's a really bright subject and a really dark background, you got to pick one or the other. It's not like a you know a 35 millimeter negative that used to be able to just well you'll get all the detail back later. This is all or nothing. It's also exceptionally slow. This 100 means it's 100 speed. And if you know anything about photography, you know that 100 speed film is on the low side of things. It's not fast. Um, now that means the colors are beautiful and all that stuff, but basically this is an outdoor film or indoors with a lot of flash power. It's just the nature of the beast in that regard. But it is very nice and um, we'll see some examples in just a minute. The other film option you have is of course, black and white. Now, the black and white stock that Fuji makes is called the FP3000B, and as you might imagine, this 3000 designates that it's 3000 speed film. Now, that's pretty handy because it means that you can shoot in just about any lighting conditions and you're going to be A-OK. -okay. That's obviously a benefit if you don't know where you're going to be shooting, but it also means you can shoot inside and you don't have to deal with any sort of you know, external flashes or anything else, and the action will be stopped fairly fast. The other good thing about the 3000 speed film is that, well, it's black and white, so immediately anything you shoot is going to look that much more artistic. So, bonus. So now that we have our films figured out, we have color or black and white, it's time to move on to loading the camera. Now, don't worry because this is actually very easy. It's not quite as easy as the traditional Polaroids that you think of when you think of Polaroid film, which is where you just put the little thing in there and it just spits out the black card. But I'm going to show you this right now. It's very easy to do. Let's start with the color stock. Open this up and then we go take it out of its little foil package. Don't squeeze it in the middle here. There's die packs all along the sides here and you just you don't want to do that. So we open it up like this. There we go, and you see there, this is how we're going to load it. It goes, well, here, we'll first put this away, take our camera. Now the camera on the back, there's a little flip notch down here. You just slide it over, and that opens the back up. And then, you take your actual film cartridge, find out where it shows and load it right in there. You just kind of put it in there and then once it's lodged in the back you just push down a little bit as you push in until you hear it snap in. There we go. And then it's good. And I like to pull this out just a tiny bit before I actually uh, continue closing it because it's kind of hard to get out after that. So once you have that, give that a little, little bit of pull. This is the tab you're going to remove all the way. Push that until you hear it click. Yes! That's okay, that's good. And then you grab it by this side, and you pull this out. And that's all there is to it. This is discarded, you're not using it again. You now have film in your camera. So, that was pretty easy, wasn't it? Let's go ahead and take a sample picture. So I'm just going to go ahead and start using the camera now. We're going to go outside for this, so I'm going to make this an all-in-one video here. All right. I'm going to open my screen door, and as you can see, it's a beautiful San Diego evening, afternoon, whatever time of day this may be. I'm going to go ahead and just go and set my exposure here. Now, the first thing we want to do is make sure that we're set for the color and dull overcast. So right now we are not. We need to set it to dull overcast. Now we are. Now we're all set. That's just going to adjust the aperture so that it doesn't overexpose. Um, we're going to cock the shutter, which is it's done. So I just push that straight down. And then we just frame up the shot we want. Now I know that for right now, because I can't look through the viewfinder, all I have to do is set it to infinity. Frame up my shot. And click. Now you've got it taken, so you just go ahead and pull this little white tab out. It's not always easy. And that releases this tab, which you then pull out that way. So now we have this color photo that we can hang around and just wait for it to expose. It should be, well, it should be no more than 90 seconds. It's kind of a cool day out. Let me go ahead and consult the back of the box for official developing instructions. And um, we'll just see what it says on here. So basically, if it's 
how many degrees out today? It's about 86 degrees, would we say? Sure. No, it's closer to 77 degrees. That means it needs 90 seconds. Okay, we can do that. That's easy. Maybe we'll do a little time lapse here, because this could be pretty boring. Just go like this. Okay, now it's finished. It's been about 90 seconds, so we're going to come back. And look at this here. Okay, so now we're on processing the image. Now that was done as we actually, just to give you a quick rundown on what happened there, as we pulled it out of the camera, all the different photochemicals in this little pouch here were evenly distributed across the surface of the photo. So that means that that's basically spreading all the developer evenly across the picture so that it can actually develop and look like a picture. That's why there's this goo here. It's kind of a cool little, uh, it's probably mildly chemical, you know, toxic, but I doubt it. And that means you basically have the process of taking a picture. And after 90 seconds, you can peel it apart. Now, it's okay if you forget. If it's been longer than 90 seconds, it can even be an hour or so. As long as you don't do it too short of an amount of time. Make sure it's a little longer than you think it should be. And then you just take it from the back corner here and you peel it up and off. And there we are. That is our instant picture. Let's see how it compares to the real world. Okay, so here's our instant photo. Yeah, looks pretty good. And let's see what it looks like outside. Yeah, I'd say they're pretty close. So, now that we've got our picture, how do we keep it safe? Well, the simplest way is by simply not letting anything touch it for a while. Hold it by the outsides, the border here, because the border never had any of the photochemical on it. And if you can put it somewhere safe, like right there, for the time being, maybe an hour or so, then it's good to go. That's basically all you have to do. I don't recommend putting them in your pocket at this point. They'll get really messed up. This is something that's kind of cool. You can let this dry as well. It'll have a kind of a negative version of the image on it. And that's usually a neat looking thing as well. I like it a lot. It looks cool on the black and whites. On the color pictures, it's not quite as identifiable. There's just too many layers, I guess. But anyway. Kind of a neat thing to be able to see the reverse image of the picture you just took, right? I like it. And that's basically the process of taking all your pictures. It's a pretty amazing process, I would say. I mean, it's it's old technology, but it's become new again by the fact that this is a completely new audience. And even though we have things like Instagram that we take things for granted, it's still really amazing to have something that originally just was a piece of paper and some chemicals and all of a sudden it's now a memory. That's the beauty of Polaroid and I hope that you enjoy the camera that you have and if you have questions keep coming back here and asking me because that is what I like to do. I like to spread the magic of Polaroid around the world so we can all have these instant memories. Enjoy!